Why, hello there! It is Gypt. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a game that I played in the Panzer 58 Mutz. Right off the bat, we can see here that the matchmaking isn't really in our favor. Granted, there are a lot of tier 8s on either team, but we are bottom tier and there are a lot of heavy tanks. Since this is an assault and we're on the assaulting team, we'll be trying to push the pace and get into the enemy base within 10 minutes. Now we'll talk a little bit about the Mutz. Uh, the Mutz has its own camouflage, you can't change it. And it's part of a tier 8 premium German tank, even though it's actually a Swiss tank. It has good gun depression at 10 degrees, except for the headlights, which actually get in the way a lot and bump your gun depression up to something like 6 or 7 degrees. The penetration is good at 212 and 240 alpha damage. The DPM isn't great, but it's not bad. Uh, you can see I have a 6.75 second reload here. I do carry about 14 APCR rounds because we do get these tier 10 matchmakings and generally any Russian tank at 212 penetration is more like a 50-50 chance to penetrate most of the time. So early game here, we're going to take up this position on this dune to try and spot any tanks crossing. We get spotted by the T-49, uh, the Fosh is next to us, but there's no arty so there's no real rush to move out of the way and move your tank around like an idiot hoping to not get hit by Sky Cancer. So while we sit here on the ridge, trying to spot, nothing's actually coming up other than this uh, T-49 and E-5 that is poking. So because we are bottom tier, uh, we're going to play very passively, uh, hoping that the heavy tanks do some of the grunt work and the lifting. Because we have a mouse and uh, a VKB and the low, you can see that they're slowly making their way across the one line and it is going to take them ages to get anywhere. Generally, I've never seen anyone actually make it across the one line, or successfully push there. We just took a shot at the E5 Coppola just for the hell of it. Generally, I've found that even with 270 pen, the Coppola can't be reliably penetrated. Uh, most of the time, you require more like 290 or something with heat rounds. And obviously, the 212 pen isn't going to do it. So, Coppola weak spot is non-existent on the E5. So the STA-1 popped up. We're hoping that he'll take another peek. Doesn't look like he's going to come up. If it were me, I probably would. But that's just because I play recklessly. So T-49 pops up again. Obviously we're going to get spotted. Reposition just to make sure we don't get shot by anything. And hopefully taking a peek to see if the STA-1 comes up to take a shot at us. He does not. Decide to go over the ridge because nothing's getting done here. Spot the Type 61. Auto aim and take a shot. Long range shot, so it was worth it. Pretty surprised it was hit. Half aimed. Get spotted, but on this ridge uh, we're pretty safe for most fire until we actually poke up onto the top of it here. You can see the IS-3 got the side. Take a blind shot. Probably not a penetration. T49 tries to take a punt at the CDC, misses. <laughs> that would have killed the CDC for sure. You can see the T28 pro prototype is on the side there. Seeing if we can get a shot. They added Coppola's in the latest patch. And obviously the gun at 0.35 accuracy and at 400 meters isn't really going to perform like we want it to. Get spotted so we pull back right away. Not too much is happening. Finally, we do have some tanks coming down in the F line there with the Bat Chat, the KV4, the OI, and the Fosh. Spot an IS-3 on this ridge. Obviously not going to penetrate that. Just IS-3 things. And now the Bat Chat has spotted the IS-7 and the STA-1. The Bat Chat is in a somewhat safe location, but if they do push up on him, he's going to be in trouble. I can't go to support yet because of the T-28 prototype on the left that I'm not comfortable um, going. So this T-28 prototype starts to take some hits. The bat shot is engaging the IS-7 and the STA-1. I'm still going to try to fish out the shot on the T-28 proto. By the time the gun aims, it was bad. Hit the mantlet or the gun of the T-28 proto, but he does uh, does get picked up there. So this gives us space to move forward to support the bat chat. 
So AI7's yeah, poking. Hope to get a shot here. Manage to find his tracks and do damage. That chat's starting to take some shots. SK1's not looking at us, so we take a shot there. The SK1 is a better target for us because it has pretty much no armor and it's at a at a place where our gun can actually reach in terms of gun depression. Take another shot, pull out. So you notice every time I take a shot, I come out of sniper mode just to take a look at the surroundings and to see where the STA-1 is aiming. We can see he's not aimed at us. He's fired, so we take another shot at him. So one concern is the IS-3 on the ridge. It's not a very large target for him to shoot, so and he's not paying attention to us anyways. Here we pick up the kill on the STA-1, and the bat chat is successfully uh, taking care of the IS-7. So that was a pretty good farm on the STA-1 there, farm 995 damage of it, and managed to get a shot at the IS-7. So still working this ridge, you can see the 110 is out in the open, I'm going to load APCR for this, um, for higher penetration, I think it's about 236. And the reason is, at this range, to penetrate a heavy tank armor, it's it's kind of dodgy. You can't aim for the weak spot, so you just have to hope for the best that you hit the tank. So I get spotted here. Managed to block a shot from the A250, and I figure it's worth it to take a shot at the 110. Not going to get many opportunities to just um, catch a tank out in the open like that. Seeing if there's any shots there. I uh, can't find one. Wait for it to get unspotted. Think about the AT-15, but there's no chance of penetrating that. The 110's still in the open, so we'll take the shot. It's still out of the open, and I'm still not spotted, so I'm comfortable taking these shots, but accuracy is kind of letting me down at 0.35. Somehow managed to pen straight the turret cheek of the 110 there. Um, I guess it's because it's a Chinese tank, not a Russian tank. You know, things made in China, generally worse quality. And we're just farming this 110 now. You can see that they've gone down to engage the E5, but I didn't really want any part of that until this 110 was out of the way, because he has side shots on us from there. So, peek down this hill. I managed to take a tracking shot on the E5. Bat shot's running away, he's probably reloading. But up from up here, there's very little chance the E5 is going to turn his gun and have the elevation to shoot us. So we're taking shots at his engine deck here. Now, the IS-3 is trying to ram him and push him, which is kind of bad, as you'll see right here. I have a shot on him, but the IS-3 pushes the E5 into cover. So the A215 has shots on us from the side, and this IS-3 as well. I believe at this part I am in cover from the AT-15 because I'm not poking out as far and I'm able to shoot the IS-3 through these bushes and he's not paying us any attention while he's tracked. So just farming this IS-3, this is my last APCR round. And you can see all those went in fairly easily. I am spotted now. I figure it's worth it because I made it at the IS-3. managed to bounce it luckily. And you can see the AP round just doesn't pen the IS-3 even though it's the we're elevated and shooting down onto his upper plate. Once again, no pen. And that one actually goes through, probably rolled high. The 5100 takes a shot at us, uh, luckily we just managed to dodge it. A little worry of this tank because it does have an autoloader. Not particularly good trades because I believe it has about 300 alpha. The E5 is still poking up on the right side, but he'll have to crest quite high in order to get shots on us. So notice that the KV-4 has shots on us, um, back up a little bit. The 5100 has gone into the dip, so we're still safe up on this ridge here. KV-4 is not looking at us, we have shots at the side of his turret, so we're going to take those. Enemy armor is damaged. And just before he gets down below the ridge, managed to pick up the kill. So the game's quite close, it's 11-11, but as we are assaulting, we do have to either kill the entirety of the enemy team in the le next minute, or we'll lose. 5100 actually came up uh, above there and picked up a kill on the German Bulldog. So I feel like he may not have the autoloader at this point, because he is playing quite passive against me. Uh, my normal fear would be that he'd just unload his entire clip. So taking shots and backing off. Missed the snapshot there, 
KV4 is supporting me from the back and managed another lucky bounce on the mantlet. Pick up that snapshot and the KV4 picks up the kill. So there's 20 seconds left in the game. There's not too much uh, we can do to win. The IS-3 does take a shot, so I do need to do something here. I want to support the Tiger 2 that's fighting the E5, hopefully get the E5s uh, back here. And uh, Tiger 2 dies and we don't make it fast. E5 is coming back and our flanking would have been spoiled anyways by the AT-15 sitting up on that ridge. Unfortunately we run out of time and the game ends. So we did lose the game. Despite being bottom tier, we managed to do 5,503 damage with 804 assisted damage. You can see we fired 36 rounds, we hit 31 for 86% accuracy, and it's still only a second class because of the defeat. 5,500 is the most I've ever done in the Mutts, and probably the most I've done in any tier 8 tank uh, by a wide margin. I believe the most I've done in the Mutts is 4,500 before this. You can see we come out first on experience, despite the loss at 1,007 base experience. If this had been a win, it would be 2,000 base experience, which would be absolutely monstrous. And despite firing 14 APCR premium rounds, we still made 58,000 credits. And the Mutz is one of those premium tanks that makes a huge amount of credits compared to the other ones. Well, that would be all. Unfortunately, we did lose, but thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. Have a good one.